Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be making over this Matchbox Lesney Major Pack M9, the Hendrickson tractor unit with the Cooper Jarrett double freighters. These were produced between 1962 to 1967. The rear freighters came with blue or silver doors and they had two different types of sticker. You could have the yellow Cooper Jarrett stickers that I've chosen to reproduce or there were some ones in orange and they were Cooper Jarrett International. If you were to find one of these in good condition then you could easily ask over £100 for it. So here's some uh, shots of the model that I've got to work with today. Somebody's painted it uh, white, then they've painted it brown, then they've painted it red, as far as I can tell. They're hollow on the inside with some bracing. This particular one has a broken platform, uh, a platform floor, which I'm trying to think about how to fix. So before I get round to that, however, I'm going to pull this uh, the Hendrickson tractor apart. Now these have unusual double wheels on them and the axle ends are recessed inside the wheels. So I cannot remove the ends of the axles. So I'm left with no option but to cut them off and make some replacement axles later on. I need to take these off because I need to clean them up. Some of them have got paint on them and they're all pretty filthy. Here's a load of axle ends that are going in the bin. Uh, the Hendrickson tractor, however, is your standard matchbox format. Is your standard matchbox format, whereby I can grind off that end of the axle and pull it out like that. So that's quite easy. Now I'm just taking off the outer flange of this rivet that's holding the base onto the cabin. That way I can get to the transparency, which is filthy and scratched and needs some TLC, some tender loving care. So having drilled out the rivet, the only thing that's holding this in is the, uh, the remains of the rivet and that flat little tab in the front there. And that comes off quite easily with a, a little bit of a, a lever with a small flat bladed screwdriver. Now you can see the rivet that's holding the windscreen into position. So I'm going to use this modified shallow drill so I don't drill through the roof. And I very gently start removing some of the material from that rivet. Uh, the rivet is actually attached to the horns on the roof. It's all one component, which I didn't realize until now. So I have a go at just prising the, the horn component off and hope that I've removed enough of the rivet to make it come off quite easily. Unfortunately, this is not as strong as I had anticipated. And one of the horns that separates, not ideal. These things happen. I resort to drifting it out with a screwdriver and hammer from the inside. Now let's have a look at this transparency. Pretty grubby, it's got some paint on it there and scuffed up quite bad, it's also very dirty. Now I'm looking at the trailer, or well, one of the trailers. I've got three of these, so today I'm going to make a road train, an Australian themed vehicle that goes into state every day. And I'm quite excited by how this is going to turn out. So there's one of the dollies that uh, you can use to attach the trailers to each other. So I'm taking the wheels off those as well because they've got to be repainted blue. The dollies actually came in raw metal or blue from the factory. And there's all the wheels off all these vehicles and trailers. There's quite a number as you can see. So I'm going to put those in some washing up liquid and hot water. Here's Kevin, he's on his way out. He's uh, learning to fly an aircraft at the moment. I figure he may have a future in civil aviation, let's hope so, because... Now I'm using this poly stripper, paint stripper of course, my tried and tested method, to get all this old paint and some of the decals 
Well, in fact, all of the decals off of these models, including the cabin and the trailer bases and the dollies. This cabin has been painted all number of colours over its time. I'm sure the kids had a lot of fun with these when they were growing up. Maybe repainting them to make them resemble something that they were familiar with. So I let this paint stripper just sit for a while to do its thing. The paint starts to bubble off and when that happens you can remove it with a toothbrush. A lot of you have seen this before and I'm tempted to leave it out but some of my comments say we want to see the whole process from start to finish each time because everyone's different in its own way so that's why you may be seeing this for the 40th time. I've got some gloves on today I'm sick of uh, getting mucky fingers and people complaining that I'm destroying my skin. So, but thanks for the safety tips, uh, they're always welcome actually, I, I do take them on board and I read all comments and uh, I learn a lot from them which is fantastic, so keep them coming. This is what one of the uh, trailers ends up like, here's the second one I'm doing. Look how good that paint stripper is, it's taking off three layers of, of paint in one hit right back to the metal. These are going to look gorgeous when they're painted. I'm going to paint them silver. There's two types. This one's held on with a rivet and a tab and some of them are held on with two tabs, one at the front and one at the back. If you look in this one that's held on with a rivet you can see there's an extra column of metal at the end there that the rivet goes into. And this is the other type with the tabs I just was talking about. So this is the earlier type by the way, the rivet came out later. I imagine it's a little bit stronger and resistant to the kids reefing the truck apart when they're playing with it. They probably separated quite a lot in those days, uh, the early ones. So some of this blue paint was a bit stubborn to get off. Paint stripper tried its best but left some little scraps behind so just using these little stainless steel dental tools that were given to me by a subscriber uh, many months ago now. He was a dentist in uh, Florida I believe. I uh, hope he's making a good living. These certainly come in handy though. If you haven't got any dental tools I suggest you get some. Don't know where, maybe pop down to your local dentist and ask if he's got any old ones. Now I'm going to replace this rivet that I'm drilling out. I want to separate these things to paint them up. I've also got to put some new doors in the back and to do that I need to take the bases off because the bases actually hold the doors into position. So I drill out the rivet and then I use this M2 tap to cut a thread in the rivet post so that I can uh, re-secure the base using an M2 screw. Now here's the one that was broken, so I uh, glued it together with some super glue to begin with just to make it easier to handle, it doesn't fall apart whilst I'm putting it in the vise. Now these guys from Muggy World in America sent me some of this stuff to try out. It's a low melting point soldering system or welding system. These rods are supposed to melt at 350 degrees C and when used with the flux they apparently provide a really quick and easy solution to this kind of repair. So I nipped down to my local hobby shop and I bought this uh, gas powered hand soldering unit and the guy assured me it uh, reaches 350 degrees. So I'm thinking well this is going to be an easy fix. So I just grind a little V into the gap there so there's an area for the weld to pull into if you like. And then I spread a liberal amount of this flux. Uh, the instructions are online by the way if you buy some of this stuff. And it seems quite easy to use but I think you need the right kind of blowtorch. Here I'm using a cheap one from a hobby shop. And despite the guy's claims I don't believe that this is applying enough heat to the metal. 
and therefore these muggy weld rods are not working as they should. So I'm a little bit sorry to say that on this occasion it didn't work for me. However, I'm going to stick with it and in the next couple of videos I'm going to source a, a better form of gas powered welding unit and I'm going to try again and I feel sure that this muggy weld stuff's going to work. Now this is one of the bases that was burred and deformed by constant play around the dolly attachment point so I've just hammered that flat using a ball pane hammer. And here's the close-up of what it looks like after I've finished working on it. It's now relatively flat and burr free so it should work as intended. The base of the cabin I'm giving a quick coat of some satin black paint that I buy from a local shop and also the same brand of silver paint which I found goes on really good and it's a little, so much more convenient than me uh, firing up my compressor and airbrush and the beauty of it is I don't have to clean my airbrush afterwards and the results are almost as good. A blind man on a galloping horse would not be able to tell the difference between these spray cans and a airbrush. After I've sprayed the trailer body, I now spray the trailer base. I do the inside as well as the outside because people are going to be looking in the rear doors, no doubt in the near future. And all these wheels I'm leaving to soak overnight in a solution of washing up detergent. Now I've got to make some rear doors here because I don't have any so anything is better than nothing so I quickly run up this design on SketchUp I'm going to try printing some out on my 3D printer there's left and right doors some are more detailed than others so I made the more detailed one first I made the one with the most detail on first and then for the simpler door I just removed the details I aligned the print so that the grain was vertical rather than on an angle which is quite normal and give them a quick coat of silver paint like I say these come in blue originally as well as silver and uh, they're not perfect I'm still experimenting with this technology but I think they will do until I find something better I printed about 20 or so of these doors some of them were better than others so I picked the best ones to use on the model now I'm just making some axles up on mass because there's a lot of axles I had to cut on this model to get it apart and paint it I'm using these very thin bullet headed nails and I've put them in the chuck of my battery drill and I'm running them over this file that's held in the vise and as I'm doing this it's uh, turning the bullet head on the nail down into a kind of uh, natural looking axle end or a imitation hubcap if you like like that and I'm just fitting it into the wheel now to see how good it looks and I think it looks almost as good as an original axle so all I have to do is reform the other end and uh, I've I'm on to a winner here I finish them off on a little bit of emery paper here just to give them a bit of a shine and make them look new I'm assembling the axle now as you can see the nails I've used are quite long so I have to cut the ends off but I'm cutting them off uh, in line with the outside surface area of the tire. That way it gives me some material to bore down into the wheel hub uh, when I'm reforming the axle. So I don't want to make them too short, in other words. And it works quite well. Considering they're just cheap nails and you can buy them $5 for 100 or so, they're a great alternative if you've got nothing else. I've undercoated the the cabin here, there's some great detail on here, look at that, it says relay, some fine casting there on the grill and headlights, I love it. Um, there's some petrol tank there, and nice filler caps and straps holding it into position, maybe a toolbox. Here's another tractor that I've got that I'm using for a colour match to assist me with colour matching the paint. Uh, they call it a tractor which I'm a little bit un... I'm not aware of the term tractor to tell you the truth other than in the agricultural sense. Over here in Australia these are called prime movers. I don't ever recall them being called tractors when I lived in England but 
that may be because I wasn't really interested in that industry at the time. Anyway, this Tamiya X4 blue paint is almost a perfect match. I was going to add some black to it, but I don't need to. I'm going to go straight with the color blue out of the pot. I think it closely matches the original color, bearing in mind these are 50 year old models and that the blue that you're seeing today might not have been the blue that it came out with at the factory. Therefore, I am going slightly darker than what I'm looking at. Now my uh, airbrush is uh, clogged, it put on a very fine coat there, which I don't like doing. So I had to give it a clean out and go again and it came out quite nice, very glossy, quite thick. I'm onto a winner I'm thinking, so I do the dollies, but unfortunately on these there's some contaminants of some description. Not too sure what it is, but the paint's not adhering as it should. So I have to strip those back and restart again from scratch. As for the tyres and wheels, I gave them a... I left them for eight hours immersed in this Dettol disinfectant. Somebody left a message for me on my um, channel and they said try that and I did and it works fantastic. So there's a new thing, go out and buy some Dettol to get paint off of plastic parts without damaging them. I even put this windscreen in the Dettol as well and the paint just fell off when I touched it with a a cotton bud. Now I'm just giving these the standard polish up treatment with the Autosol metal polish, cotton buds and some makeup pads that I found. So I might have to do this uh, once, maybe twice, sometimes three times, but eventually when I'm happy with the polishing process to give them that final gleam I dip them into some self-shining floor polish and tap off the excess. Then I place them on a piece of kitchen towel to drain and cover them up with a dust cover so that in six hours time or so. Now here's some stickers I printed off, the yellow Cooper Jarrett branded stickers that this model had on it. It also had, as I said before, some orange international ones which are those models are more expensive as they are rarer. I think these ones turned out quite good, or very difficult to get them to fit exactly. Now the shape of these decals is unique. And if you don't get them right, it's quite noticeable because they sit in a recess on the model. So it took me a lot of time and many, many failures to get them this good. Now a tip with cutting arcs using these tiny curved nail scissors is to have the curve facing out. Contrary to what you may think, it gives you more control on cutting around a radius like this. If you try them the other way, they tend to dig in too quickly and they're difficult to control. Remember you've got to cut and keep it moving all at the same time. And I must admit that I threw more of these away than I actually kept. That's why I printed so many of them off. I anticipated that. Uh, this isn't one of my best ones, but I'm showing it to you just to see it can be done. To help these adhere to the model, I'm testing out this decal setting and softening solution for the first time. Now I've let these soak in some water, the backing paper separating, and all I'm doing is concentrating on that center part Oh, that's all I want. If the center is in the middle, then I'm hoping the rest of it will work. So rather than looking at the whole thing, I'm just concentrating purely on the middle there. And once I've got it into position, I just wick away the excess moisture and that uh, decal sealant product I was talking about and roll any air bubbles out with a cotton bud and I think they turned out quite nicely. For some reason however, the left and the right ones turned out slightly different size as you'll see in the end pictures. These things are bound to happen and it's all trial and error and you're learning as you go. So if you haven't tried making your own decals, I recommend you do as you can save a lot of money by doing it and have a lot of fun also. 
Now I'm putting in these reproduction doors that I painted silver before. Remember I said they were held in place by the base plate. So you put the front of the base plate in first and then the rear on this model, this is the tongue and groove model, I have to prise the rear section out slightly, the rear rail out slightly. Use minimal force to push that back into position and now check that the doors actually close and they do. Now on the original the bolt on the left door there was at the top on the right hand door. And I thought, how the heck can somebody reach that without a stepladder? So I think whoever did it in the factory uh, probably did it the wrong way around. And that's why I've done it with the bolt at the bottom. So correct me if I'm wrong. Now, one of the tractors had the, the one I'm working on. The tractor I'm working on had the trailer attachment point missing. It must have been sheared off during play. And uh, luckily, I've got the other one for reference. So I found these, I think they might be stainless steel, perhaps screws, countersunk screws, in my shed, my screw box. And I think I can make a suitable alternative by modifying these screw heads. So I'm using my Dremel here with the rotary cutting disc. I'm just taking them down to try and give me a rough resemblance of the, the thing I'm trying to make. Uh, I must admit, I'm thinking at this moment in time, this may be too difficult to do, but after about one hour of fine filing, filling, and refiling, it turned out very similar to the original. So I'm happy with that. Here's some close-up pictures of the finished trio, because remember I'm making a road train. So the trio of freight, uh, what do they call them? Double freighters. No, it's probably just a single freighter, but there's three of them. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. I've just heard the mailbox go, so I thought I'd pop out and check to see if I had any mail. So here's a reminder of what we started with. This is the Hendrickson tractor unit, as it's called. They are the Major Pack M9. So I painted it blue, I stripped it down, painted it blue, spruced up the tires, new axles, repaired the broken horn that I damaged, and made a replica part for the uh, attachment point. Here's one of the rear freighters. It was painted in three different colors, stripped it back, painted it silver, didn't bother undercoating it because silver on metal looks good, put some reproduction decals and doors on it, new axles, and I think you'll agree it looks a hell of a lot better than it did when it came into my possession. Here is Cooper's grandson, Bob tailing it towards Melbourne to collect his first trailer. He's heading for Cooper PD tomorrow and he's on a tight time schedule. From Melbourne, it's cross country to Geelong for his second pickup. Then he's headed west to South Australia to complete his three trailer road train combination, up to 53 and a half meters long. Now for the 850 kilometer trip to Kubapedi, driving for nine hours to deliver essential supplies to this outback mining community. Thank you for watching Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Keep watching and I will see you next time. But until then, goodbye. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> Am I supposed to tell you? Yeah, I need the cue. But I don't know. Coming in. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> Now, <laughs> tip back, tip back. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Ah! Oh, oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it wasn't recording. <laughs> what? I didn't record. <laughs> I didn't hit record. <laughs> that felt like a rock. <laughs> we have to do it again. Your hand. Why are you, your hands going in the, in the front of the <laughs> You have to do it again. Jesus Christ. I'm looking at bloody amateurs. <laughs> it's okay, it's still, it's still recording. It's not hard. Ah! <laughs> Why is she screaming? <laughs> it's just an egg. Let me throw an egg at your head. <laughs> oh, God, oh, crap, the egg. Oh, for God's sake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> idiot. Need another one. How many is, was thrown? Well, it feels like about ten. Five. <laughs> I'm really close. You can just piff it. Look up, like Kevin's annoyed you. Wait. 